What's going on, everybody? Jay Retro here with you. Another edition of Bolts Breakdown. Uh, we're just waiting for our good buddy Brian Burns. He's in Columbus right now to join us, and uh, hopefully this isn't the last Bolts Breakdown of the season. I don't think it'll be, uh, but of course, we'll go over tonight's game against the Columbus Blue, Jack Blue Jackets. We'll look back at what happened in Game 3, and then Burns will also give us an update of what happened today at Morning Skate. Uh, some interesting uh, developments there with some guys being on the ice, some guys not being on the ice, and then a very interesting line change. So, Bernsey, let's bring him in here. Add him. Hey, Fabio, what's going on, brother? Appreciate you guys, as always, tuning in here on Bolts Breakdown. Let us know where you're watching from. Put it there at the bottom of the screen. Also, share this on your Facebook. We're trying to spread that word out there uh, so everybody out there can be the thunder. Brian Burns, what's going on, brother? Hey, man, just trying to adjust some things right now. There you go. <laughs> Oh, good. How's the hotel there, man? Uh, I'm not in the team hotel. I'm actually in a, uh, a courtyard Marriott, and it's uh, oh, not okay. exactly the uh, nicest place that I've stayed in. <laughs> I think I've stayed in Super 8s that are a little bit nicer than this courtyard Marriott. Wow. I have this, like, this weird uh, rail thing in the middle of my room. I'm actually like up on a platform uh, where my desk is, uh, and then the bed's over on the bottom part. So it's a little weird setup. Not gonna lie. Well, let's hope you have to go back there for another game for Game Six for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna request a different hotel if we have to come back for Game Six. When you have to go back to Game Six, brother. That's how we're exactly. Gonna think. I like, there we go. Brian Burns. Beat I like writer. that thinking. Brian Burns beat writer for Tampa Bay Lightning. dot com. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at bburnsnhl. Jay Retcher. Follow get my me. My towel at out of Jay here. Retcher. Yeah, get that towel <laughs> out of there. Uh, but hey, it's, my room's a mess right now. That's okay. At least we know you shower, so that is a good thing. Um, all right, yeah. before we get into tonight's game and uh, what happened at morning skate, let's look back at game three a little bit, Burnsy. And you know what? Uh, not a great first period, only having three shots on goal. The second period a little iffy, but I really thought in that third period they started to kind of find a little bit something. I know some people say, oh, it's too little, too late, but I really like how they were working below the dots. Uh, and they got some pretty good chances there. Andre Palat uh, chips in and gets a goal and kind of cuts the lead in half. And they just couldn't push another one past Bobrovsky, but – do you think the Lightning uh, can take some of what they learned there in the third period of Game 3 over to tonight's game? Yeah, well, I mean, they're going to have to, right? Uh, yeah. there, there's not much, uh, not much else to, to really do at this point. But, yeah, that, that seemed to be the general sentiment in the locker room after the game was they, they felt like maybe they not necessarily figured some things out, but maybe figured some things out about themselves. I, I think maybe they've – you know, just adjusted too much to what Columbus is doing, and they've kind of gotten away from, you know, what's gotten them 62 wins during the regular season what, and what made them so dangerous uh, this year during the regular season. So I think in that third period, you saw them kind of get back to the style of play that they were used to seeing from them. They uh, didn't really dump and chase as much as they have been. They, they utilized their speed, their skill to get the puck in the zone and, and keep possession, which is something that uh, they really haven't done much of this entire series uh, for me, just, you know, too cheap with, with giveaways, just, just giving away the puck so easily and not even under pressure or uh, anything like that. You see them work so hard to get the puck, and then it's just like a, a errant pass up ahead that's really, you know, doesn't have much the chance of being completed and, uh, and give it right back and, and really not facing pressure or just not thinking the, the game smartly. So I think you saw them get back to more of that in the third period of game three. I, I liked their first period and game three. I didn't really, I know they got outshot 12 to three and Columbus had a little bit more zone time, a little bit more of the possession, but uh, I thought they played a really well uh, or a really structured game defensively. Uh, I thought there were a lot of good things that they could take out of that first period. Uh, the way they played defensively, I thought Andre Vasilevsky played well in the first and made some, some good saves to kind of get his confidence going a little bit. Uh, the penalty kill, I thought, did really well in the first period. They had one uh, uh, power play they had to kill off, and they did a good job of that. Uh, and, and looked like the penalty kill that we've seen during the regular season uh, in that first period. So I know the shots weren't coming and the offensive opportunities weren't there, but I thought they played a really good, uh, sound road playoff game. Just uh, They knew that the Columbus was going to come out hard. Uh, they were going to have a, a big surge because you know, they were up 2-0 and they're playing in front of their home crowd for the first time. Uh, and they were going to, you know, they, they just had to weather that, that early storm. And I thought they did a really good job of that. And then just things got away from them a little bit in the second period. 
So almost like the adrenaline dump that we saw in the second period for the Lightning. I think the Lightning were kind of hoping that Columbus would have that same thing. Uh, didn't really happen to that effect, but I'm with you, man. I think there's some things that they can build off of in game three. What was the kind of the candor like in the, in the locker room? I know Tyler Johnson was one of the guys that – uh, said something about, hey, man, if there's any team that can do it, it's this team right here. And I think that's kind of the uh, the hope for a lot of Lightning fans here in the Tampa Bay area and abroad uh, as we see people watching from all the way out there in Cairo, Egypt. Um, I think that's the thing. If any team is going to come back, I know it's happened four times in NHL history, but the way this team is constructed, even with those injuries, uh, you'd hope to think that Tampa Bay would be one of those teams. Yeah, I mean, they have a guy that they can lean on for experience at Braden Coburn. He's one of those guys yeah. that was on a uh, – he was one of those four teams back in when uh, the Philadelphia uh, Flyers uh, – it was against Boston, I think, in the mm -hmm. second round. Yep. In 2010, they came back from an 0-3 deficit and then went on to, to go to the Stanley Cup final where they lost it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, the, the general sentiment seems to be pretty good. Uh, you know, there, there's still, you know, confidence in the room uh, – the, the, the mood I got today was just one of excitement. Like, they're excited for the challenge. They're excited to get out there and play their style of hockey and, and really just lay it all on the line in kind of a do-or-die game. I mean, this is the most adversity that they've faced all season and in quite some time. And I think they're excited to see, you know, how they respond to it. And I think they feel pretty good about their chances. Uh, you know, they're, they're not really focusing on the fact that they have to win four straight games. It's more of just, like, Let's get this win tonight. Let's, let's get back into the series. Let's get it back to Tampa, and then we'll worry about game five once game four is over with. But I think there's just a general mood of excitement to, to get back out there and kind of show, you know, what kind of team they really are than the team that we've seen in these first three games. Brian Burns, Jay Ratcher here with you. Always let us know where you're watching from here on Bolts Breakdown. Alyssa from Kissimmee, thank you very much. And we also saw somebody from L.A. as well. So we're all over the world with Bolts Breakdown today, including – of course, our buddy Fabio in Italy and our buddy Frederick out there in Sweden. So let us know where you're watching from. Share this on your Facebook and also share it to all the many Lightning fan pages. I know you guys are all over the place. Uh, really good stuff, as always. And Brian and I definitely appreciate you. Uh, Burns, you let's we got look some big numbers up there, too. Yeah. That number's up to 127 now. Yeah, man. We had as much as 130 thanks uh, to Mike in L.A. So let's share that. Let's get it up to 200. Come on, share this on your Facebook, everybody. Wow. Joe Martin, Michigan, what's going on? And Tracy up in Syracuse. All right, the big news today from Morning Skate, brother, is uh, yeah, obviously Anton Strawman and Victor Hedman will not be in the lineup tonight. And, and then also you're looking at uh, Alex Kalorn being a game-time decision. But the one thing that really caught my eye, Bernsey, is the line combinations, including line one. Why don't you tell everybody what line one is going to be looking like tonight? Yeah, and uh, it was a little hard to tell what the lines were because they were kind of mixing and matching, like guys were going in and, and out of lines. But it, is, it does look like, you know, Anthony Sorelli is going to center the top line with, with Steven Stamkos on his left and Nikita Kucherov on his right. Uh, and he was asked, you know, Sorelli was asked about that after, uh, after morning skate. And uh, he was, you know, happy for the opportunity to be able to play with two big playmakers like that and said his job is just going to be to – you know, get the puck as often as he can and, and get it on those guys' sticks and, and really good scoring uh, opportunities or, or in a position for good scoring opportunities. So I like that combination. I like, you know, I, I'm a big Anthony Sorelli fan, just, you know, what he brings to this team, his 200-foot game, the, uh, the, the defensive-minded uh, responsibilities that he has while also being able to contribute offensively. Uh, I think he's a really big part of this team, and I think he, you know, could be that perfect guy for for those two to at least be able to retrieve pucks and, and get it to them in spots where they have an opportunity to score. So we'll see if that line sticks. Uh, these lines have been shuffling pretty much the entire series. I don't know. I don't think we've gone an entire game where you know the lines that we saw, yeah. uh, you know, from pregame warmups have remained the same. So. Uh, that's something that this group kind of prides themselves on. We've asked them about it before, about playing with different guys, and uh, they kind of pride themselves on being able to play with really anybody in the lineup. They feel like everybody on the team has skill uh, and is a good player, and, and they can just kind of mix and match as they choose. And it doesn't really – you know, they don't need, like, consistent line mates to be able to produce. So we'll see if this, you know, shakes something up. We'll see if these lines stick. You know, who knows if, you know, five minutes into the game they're, they're shuffling again, and it'll, it'll be interesting to watch that unfold. So it'll be those guys on line one. It looks like Point, Palat, and Johnson for line two. What about those bottom two lines? Uh, there were some uh, interesting situations there. Where was I 
looking correctly that Paquette was the third line center and Gord was the fourth line center? Yeah, it, it did appear to be that. It, and that's what I'm saying. It seems like some yeah, of these lines are a little – yeah, it's kind of hard to get a read. And I think with Kalorn, too, he was in the mix with those, but there's still – I think he's in tonight. I think, you know, just based off of what we saw during uh, pregame skate that he'll probably play unless, you know, they always, whenever there's a guy that, that's, you know, kind of questionable, they'll do a skate. And then after the skate's over, they'll, they'll check in with them and, and see, you know, how they felt during the skate, how they feel when they get back to the rink before the game, if they're still feeling okay. So as long as all those things shake out positively, I think you'll see Alex Kalorn in. Uh, so we didn't see JT Miller in any of those line combinations, but I got to think that he's probably going to be a guy that's in there. I don't know that he would be a guy that you scratch at this point. So uh, we did see Ryan Callahan, you know, back in his uh, in his role uh, where we're used to seeing him. So it looks like he'll probably be in again tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's Miller that comes out. I don't know if you go with one of the younger guys like Ernie and Joseph, if you take one of them out to get Callahan in, but you know, certainly with Kucherov coming back and Callahan looking like he's going to be in the lineup, one of those guys is going to have to come out. That's interesting to see Miller not be in there because I thought he's been one of their better players in this series. Yeah, Miller, me too. Warren Sorelli's been the best line, in my opinion. Yeah, I, so I, I, and even Matt, Adam Ernie, I thought he had that nice kind of spinorama move. I mean, it's tough to take him out. Uh, do you take, you know, I know you've gotten a little bit of an emotional boost with Ryan Callahan being in there, but that penalty was killer. Uh, I thought that was one of the bad situations of the entire game. And early on in that yeah. game, I thought he was more of the problem than the solution, unfortunately. So uh, I guess that'll be a game-time decision call. And then defense, Bernsey looking the same. Sergachev, Girardi, McDonough, Chernak, and then Coburn and Rudolph. Yeah, yeah, we saw those same defensive pairings. And, and Strawman, he was out there. He skated. And, you know, it looks like he's getting better and is getting close. Uh, we thought maybe tonight might be uh, the time where he would be able to get back in. But – uh, John Cooper shot that down pretty quickly, so he's still not ready. And then added, you know, Victor Hedman, still not ready. Kalorn, game time decision. So uh, still waiting for Hetty and, and Strawsey. And, and those are two, you know, big horses, two guys that, that this team's, you know, leaned on, you know, all season. Uh, they've been two, you know, proven playoff performers. Obviously, I've, we know what Victor Hedman brings to the table when you're losing some of that. Uh, that offensive production from your defenseman when he's not in there, you're losing that top power play guy, the quarterback of that power play unit. And I think Mikhail Sergachev has done a good job filling in in that role and has yeah. uh, done well, you know, with the increased ice time and with more responsibility. But, you know, how many times have we heard John Cooper say that, that we go as Victor Hedman goes? Yep. And if he's not in the lineup tonight, you know, what does that mean for the Lightning? Well, let's hope because this team has had that practice with him being out of the lineup and the job that Ryan McDonough did earlier this year, stepping up in his absence. But I'm with you. I really like Mikhail Sergachev's game. I think he's really played well the last couple of games. And at times like this, you have to have some guys really step up and take their game to the next level. And you're seeing that with some of their younger players, Sergachev and Chernak on the blue line and guys like Sorelli up front. Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com. Follow him on Twitter at BBurnsNHL. You can follow the team at TB Lightning. Follow me at JRetcher. Follow the station at 95.3 WDAE. All right, Burnsy, the Lightning are going to stave off elimination tonight in game four against the Columbus Blue Jackets, brother. These are probably be your biggest keys of the year. Give them to me. Your three it's all keys on to me. Victory. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's all on you, brother. Your three keys to victory for the Bolts tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, number one for me, and I think this kind of goes without saying, but just play desperate. You know, this could be the last game of the of the season, and if you don't play well, then then that's all she wrote. So you got to come into this one giving it everything you got and, and playing desperate and just laying it all out there on the line. Every cliche you want to throw in there, uh, it's got to be used tonight because if if you don't win tonight, it's all over. Uh, number two for me is, is play play your game, play your style of game. Don't play columbus's game or don't try to be something that you're not to try to counteract what columbus is doing i think you know if you're going to lose this game if you're going to lose this series at least go down swinging playing the style of game that that brought you to this point that got you 62 wins during the regular season that that you know got you one of the most historic uh regular seasons in nhl history uh so i just want to see them play their game and if if you lose going down that way then you, you know you tip your cap to columbus and you say job well done you guys earned it but uh, I don't want to see the Lightning try to be a, a more physical team to try to match what Columbus is doing. I don't want to try to. I don't want to see them be a dump and chase team to try to counteract what Columbus is doing. Just play your game, and if it, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, uh, it didn't work out. But you got to play your game. And then number three for me, you got to kill penalties. I mean, 
how many times they've given up a power play goal in every one of these games in this series. They're like four for eight on the penalty kill uh, in this entire series. And that, that second goal was such a backbreaker. You, you mentioned the, the Callahan penalty that, that led to that power play goal. They got Columbus a 2-0 lead in game three. It was uh, really kind of a bizarre play for Callahan where it looked like there was a loose puck and a, a pretty good opportunity. It looked like he could be the first guy to get to it and maybe get a good shot on goal with, with no one in front of him. And, uh, it said he went for a hit and it turned into an interference penalty and uh, and then it ends up in the back of their net on a another high blocker shot uh, on Andre Vasilevsky's net. And it seems like uh, Columbus has really targeted that area. They've scored a lot of their goals going high blocker side and credit to them. They're they're putting shots just in incredible spots. And, and to me, that almost is, has been the story of the series where you have a Lightning team that scored 319 goals during the regular season. That's more than any team since, like, 1995. Uh, and they just they did it by burying their opportunities. And they've gotten the few opportunities. I know they've been limited in those opportunities. But the few that they've had, they've had some good looks. And they're just misfiring. They're missing the target. They're not even putting anything on frame where they could give Bobrovsky an opportunity to, to cough up a rebound or maybe, you know, make a shaky save. So, uh, they really just need to put more pucks on frame and, and and get some of those good shots that we've seen throughout the year. And, and credit to Columbus, it seems like everything they're shooting is in a corner or is up high or is in a really tough spot for Andre Vasilevsky to try to save. Yeah, it's kind of funny to when you watch like last night some of the games and you see how free flowing and back and forth it is. And it's like I haven't seen the Lightning really get that many free flowing opportunities the last couple of games, but. You know, tonight is the night. You got to change it all around. You got to be able to go out there and take advantage of these opportunities and put the puck in the back of the net when it's warranted. Usually, my one guy to watch is the guy on the other team, but I'm getting real close here, and I'm looking at one man tonight to make the difference to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and that's number 86, Nikita Kucherov. Listen, you don't like talking to the media? We get it. You don't like everything that goes with being a professional athlete? We understand. But at the end of the day, you are the MVP of the National Hockey League. You made a mistake in game three, you can put it behind you and make game four your B, okay? This is the night is the night to Nikita Kucherov to come out and show everybody why he's widely considered by one of the best players in the world. Bernsey, I'm overly optimistic, and I get that. But if they win tonight and they can get it back to Emily Arena for game five and somehow win that game, Columbus goes back to game six all of the pressure pressure is on the Blue Jackets, all of it. And then it's Game 7 at Amelie Arena. There's no other building that I would want a, a Game 7 in. Obviously, it's the home arena for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I don't know, man. I, I just think, and I know it's looked pretty dreary, but I think if Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos tonight can put a mark on this game, I think it really turns everything around. And I really think it'll give the Lightning enough momentum to come back in Game 5 I trust that everybody's going to be at the game in game five if there is one and to be able to catapult the team and they get back to playing the right way and their star players show up tonight, they have a chance to make history. I know Tyler Johnson said it after the game the other night. If there's any team that can do it, it's this Tampa Bay Lightning team. You don't win 62 games by accident. You don't have 340 goal scorers and a Vezina Trophy candidate by accident. And you know what? The fourth one is the hardest to win. And you know what? I may look like an idiot, and they may lose tonight. But you know what? If there's any team that deserves the benefit of the doubt, that they can go back and deserves that all of you Lightning fans out there to stay with them and be on this ride for them to come all the way back and win this damn thing, it's this Tampa Bay Lightning team. I'm looking at you, 86. I think this is the night you show everybody why that you're one of the best players in the world. Am I crazy, Bernsey, or do they have a chance? No. No, I don't think so at all. It, it's funny. We, uh, we had a, a media dinner last night. Usually, you know, in every playoff round that we go through, I, this is my fifth year with the team, and every time we've gone on the playoffs in each city that we go to, we have kind of a media dinner where the media that's, you know, in town covering the team, we all kind of get together and uh, have dinner one night. And uh, I got a chance to talk to Dave Anderchuk. He was there, and uh, it was really interesting to hear some of his stories and some of his insight into the series. But the thing that struck me from, from what Andy was telling us was that, you know, Torts, and obviously he has a history with Torts and knows, you know, a lot about the man and, and you know, what he's telling his team. And he said, Torts, I guarantee you, Torts is in his locker room right now telling his team they have to win game four, that if they don't win game four, that they're going to lose this series. So you're going to see Columbus come out with everything they've got because they feel like they have to finish the job tonight. 
Uh, and if they don't, then the Lightning are going to swing the momentum in the series, and it could be, uh, you know, four straight wins for the Lightning. Uh, and that was the one thing that – if he is telling him that, and I, I would suspect that, that Andy probably knows better than anyone what, what Torts is telling his guys – uh, if if they do lose tonight, then does that get in your head when your coach has been telling you yeah. you have to win tonight or the other team's going to come back and win this series? So if you do lose tonight uh, and you have to go back to Tampa, does that start to get into their head? Does, does, does the doubt you know, start to creep into the back of their mind that we've never won a playoff series before? We, we had a 2-0 lead last year against Washington and we couldn't close it out. So you wonder if some of that doubt starts to creep in if they're not able to to get a win tonight and – uh, we know what this Lightning team can do with a little bit of momentum. They, they've lost their swagger somewhere along the way in this series. They've lost that momentum. But if they can get it swinging back in their direction, they're perfectly capable of reeling off four straight wins. Without a doubt. That's Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at BBurnsNHL. Follow the team at TB Lightning. Go to TampaBayLightning.com for the best news and notes. What's today's story on, brother? Do or die, man. Do or die situation. And, and uh, just uh, the, the excitement that you kind of felt in the locker room from the guys about excited to go out and, and try to turn this thing around and try to play their style of game and, and get, you know, back into the series. Definitely have a chance, Brian. Thanks for everything, brother. And you know what? We're not going to say if, but we'll talk to you on Friday. All right, brother?